Welcome to the King James Virgin, where each and every week my friends Alan and Adam recount Bible stories from their childhoods to me. I've never heard them before. My name is Nick. I'm Alan. And my name is Adam. So today uh, we're going to do an episode off a book of the Bible I'd kind of forgotten about. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so Nick, there's a, a a collection of poetry in the Bible. I mean, there's a couple. Different. Boring. Yep. <laughs> no, but like this is literally like somebody found David's journal and just published it. So today we're talking about um, uh, one specific psalm uh-huh. in the book of Psalms, which is attributed to King David. And Psalms is what you forgot. I forgot. Well, That's I mean, one of the books no... that I would have probably named. No, I mean, like, really? if you say, like, if, if, if somebody goes, like, what are some of the big key books of the Bible? Like, and just, like, that was, like, I, Psalms would be in it. Yeah. But well, because as... you're forced to memorize some of them. Sure. But it's also just, like, it's... I had kind of forgotten about it because it wasn't on my spreadsheet of <laughs> Bible stories <laughs> because there's no stories. No. Sure. It's... So this is, like, uh, what's the one that's just letters? Mm, that we never do anything from. This is like if they took uh, uh, <laughs> nothing. Did I make that up? You know I mean, like Paul's letters. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like the second half of of the New Testament is okay. all just Paul's letters. Great. Too like like Ephesians, just like the letters of the Ephesians. Like, I would say I this see. is more like if the Bible was the book The Hobbit, and they took <laughs> all of the songs interspersed throughout the book The Hobbit, and, and I'm just the made one, one chapter. Mm-hmm. That's Psalms. There's an audience for that, I'm sure. Oh. Yeah. No, this is huge. Yeah. I, I will I will say like the general consensus in the Christian church is like Psalms is where the creative people hang out because like, you know, you like poetry. So does it also then like, is that also like it leaves more room for interpretation because they're not stories or, you know, like I would sort of argue the opposite. Um, so eh, this is OK. This is well, there's no theology in it. This is an argument. I'm making because of an experience yesterday (laughs) when I argued about the meaning of a Bible verse with Adam's grandma. Um, it basically, there's a, there's a verse in, uh, that we talked about in, um, I think it's in Deuteronomy where it's, you can stone your disobedient children. Right. Okay. Anyway. And she said that that's not what it means. I'm like, it says to stone your disobedient (laughs) children. And so I almost think that Psalms because it's just poetry, like there's like almost less room for interpretation, you know, because or uh, like a different kind. It's like not like a life or death interpretation. No, it's but it, like it's, a, it's also not really speaking. It's not speak. It's not th- speaking theology. It's not, there's no like rules. No one's going to judge someone else and use a Psalms to back them up. No. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's also just boring as fuck. Okay. Well, it's, it's boring to me. Like, I, I don't know. The, my, my I, I don't say this is Adam's like main interaction with Psalms was in uh, in different praise bands that I was in. It would be like people trying to shoehorn a because also what we didn't say is like not only is this his book of poetry, it's usually interpreted as his songbook. Like he was writing lyrics to the music. Oh, he was uh, absolutely. I mean, salt the Psalter like it's like an instrument. Uh, apparently, uh, but uh, I'm gonna need a trigger warning before you say those words again. Which one? Uh, praise band? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. And so like, it'd be trying to shoehorn these lyrics into which God knows how many different versions. Like, first of all, these were like orally transferred through the ages, sure. at which point they were written down in a language and at least interpret like gone through like one or two translations. Yeah, probably more. Right. Um, also, also, uh, there were translations of the Bible on top of that. So you have like theologians applying criticism sure. on though, though they're got like, a Beowulf situation, but there is like a Jewish, like traditional tune sung with this. Like, so that's probably been, cause that'd be an easy way to memorize something to a tune. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying like Amanda greens exist in like <laughs> pop music from the sixties. There's no way in hell that these lyrics have whatever. I get what you're saying. What I'm, all I'm trying to say is like they were, they did not fit into westernized music very well at all. Um, but you sure as hell tried. Oh God, they tried hard. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that later. Um, there are a lot of songs based off of this particular Psalms, Psalms 23. Oh, I'm sure you've, you've heard bits. Like- I, I, I just mentioned the one, first line to Nick and he brought up both him and Evie brought up separate artists already oh sure so uh yeah they're familiar they, but also like they're aware they're like there's there's zeitgeisty terms. there's some you're not going to guess though it's exciting <laughs> okay i had to look up who so so this is basically uh like 
homeboy's journal where he scribbles like his little ideas throughout the day and uh, song song hooks. So, and I, I'm really sketching like the Pearl Jam guy. Next yeah, to the I'm things. actually realizing this this might be an experience that as an a religious person com- you're completely have no connection to. Um, because it's as opposed most, to the rest of this show. Well, like, <laughs> yes, I, but I, I think you can like, you have some <laughs> reference points to ideologies and uh-huh. like, uh, like adhering to an ideology Okay, yeah, and yeah. whether you agree with the ideology or not, like understanding that relationship, what I don't think you probably, I'm, I'm wondering actually how this lands on you. Like there is a very specific human experience of doubting your faith mm-hmm. that comes with like religion. Mm -hmm. And this book is mostly not completely, but mostly David writing about his interaction with his faith in whether God exists or whether whether God is with him. Um, And in some cases feeling the presence of God and feeling a blessed, is that a fair? Cool. You know what I say? So this is the, this is the segment of uh, like Christianity and like having Christian friends, like when I was growing up, or now, right? That like creeps me out a little bit. Where I'm like, Ooh, sure, you're going that's, through a thing that's, that's just fair. in your brain. <laughs> no, nope. and that's yeah, and, that's yeah. fair. I mean, I, I think this is more like a collection of like, um, you know, he loves me, he loves me not, sort of. You <laughs> yeah, know, like I, I don't he, know. He, yeah, it, a journal is correct. It's but like a like, poetry journal. It'd be yeah. as if you were reading one of your friend's poetry journals. It, it's painful. It's, uh-huh. it's painful, but it's also, I would say like... At least this has an editor, probably. Maybe. At least, it was, yeah, when they did the translation, at least there was an editor. I the, They took out all the steamy bits. I guess what, like, how this hits me different, it, it being, especially like as a kid who frequently struggled with the pragmatic parts of faith, where I would have... I wouldn't necessarily say like breakdowns, but like the idea of breakdowns around my faith that I'd be going to like, you mean like doubting things, thinking that I'm like broken somehow because I couldn't feel like the quote unquote presence of God. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And like going to my parents and asking for help Mm -hmm. and really not getting great answers. And so is this, uh, like, are, are you sent to Psalms when you require no, this consolation? No, more just like this is this is the closest to that journey that I feel like is actually in the Bible. There's no there, like it's generally not considered good form to doubt God. And this mm-hmm. book is like 50 50 doubting that God is there. Hmm. Uh, and I will say, Nick, Adam and I probably are familiar with this because it's like the um Adam, what are some like Bible versions of like a pop culture thing? Besides, we've talked about music, but like, you know, when they'll have like a, a, a movie and do like, oh, you, oh, like there's Bible versions of like Indiana Jones, whereas he's like an archaeologist, but it's like Bible stuff. Oh, you mean like just like Christian, <laughs> like Christian specific like fiction? Yes. So my theory is that we had to memorize a lot of these in lieu of like Shakespeare sonnets. You know, like this was religious poetry. Yeah. And, I, and that's why we had to memorize them. That's my, just my guess. I mean, yeah, my interaction was less with it. Like the only times that I think it was, was like weekly Bible verses for Sabbath school that I you had didn't have to, to memorize this. I not really. Oh, and like Psalms 100, 23 and 100 are like big ones. My, my parents weren't really into, it wasn't my parents. It was like, it was like school or church. <laughs> hmm. I might've, but I probably purged it. I mean, I, I was, I mean, like, like, like with most of most with most school, which is how one of the reasons I know that the educational system's fucked, uh, it was set up to like learn quick and purge. Yeah. You take the test yeah. done, which is not the point of education. <laughs> uh, I, I would say I learned this enough times that I still know it. I think I, I mean, I could get through it, but I don't, it's not like it's there, but not there. I mean, well, I'm not going to read it. There are, there are. <laughs> There are unless Nick asks really nicely. Right, there are scripts of West Wing that I can quote better. <laughs> wow. Fuck. Uh, I mean, having said that, um, so uh, kind of spinning off, and before we even cover the the content of this, just talking about the 
We're just ramping it up. We're getting everybody hot for the Psalms. Uh, no one cares. <laughs> well, it's just funny because I was I was kind of as I was driving down here, I was thinking about this psalm and, and how I kind of know it. Just repeating it over and over in your and head. And then I was mantra. thinking of a song inspired by a song inspired by this psalm. Okay. And how much better I know Amish Paradise <laughs> than this song. Yeah. Which I th- I think Nick gets that joke. Yeah. No, totally. I could I could definitely. Yeah. I, I absolutely. <laughs> and I know do. that Adam for sure knows that song by heart. Yeah. Amish Paradise. Yeah. That's yeah. oh, great. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, so Nick. So without further ado, <laughs> Adam, do you remember any of this? What Amish Paradise? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't question that at all. Do you know any of Psalms oh, 23? Yeah, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, you skipped the beginning. Oh, what is the... The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Yeah, you're skipping he a little bit. He lays <laughs> me beside still waters. Then he restores my soul. Yep. Sure. Uh, and then shadow of death. Yeah, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no either. Thy ride and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Skipped a few, but it's fine. Fuck it. This is what I'm saying. Like <laughs> you get it. It's 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 using a shepherd metaphor for God. Mm-hmm. Um and it's just it's tidy. You know, it's only six verses. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those like easy to memorize the whole mm-hmm. the whole shebang. Um and it's fine. It's fine. And this is what they say to dead people as they're dying, right? It's popular at funerals. Yeah. Very popular. I mean, because the valley so of the after shadow they're death. dead. Yeah, it's like not spoke, on a deathbed. It's spoken at funerals. Got it. Uh, I feel like cinematically, it's a deathbed thing. So the deathbed thing—that's Catholic. That's one hundred percent Catholic. Got it. No one else does it because you're you're purging your soul. Like basically, like call the priest. They need to do it because right, right, right. if they don't, then they got to end up in uh, purgatory. Yeah. Uh, Christians, like you've already basically been judged at this point. Like if you haven't like confessed your sins and like believe, like because uh, like theoretically, all you have to do is say I believe. Like you have to honestly believe in in Jesus, and then you're saved. Yes, as as a Protestant. Mm-hmm. As a Catholic, there's a few more yeah, yeah, yeah. technicalities. Um, and so like best to clean house right before you go. <laughs> yes. Oh, and that's the, and that's the thing is like, that's why you get like deathbed confessions and all those things. And, and cause like, that's a, that's a, a uniquely Catholic thing, not a Protestant thing. So like we don't, or right. just a fun, like plot point and live hard. Yes. Die young. Which is also, I think why like movies, I think have popularized it because it's a thing that you can like dramatically put in a movie. Whereas like, the Protestants are like, and they were surrounded by their family or the family that still liked them, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, and, but no funerals was where a lot of that would come out. It was yeah. like, and it's really interesting because now, like I actually find funerals much more comforting post Christianity than I do because like there's an element of like, depends on how preachy the pastor gets. Well, no, like there was an element at any, when I was a practicing Christian at a funeral, there was like existential stakes on the board, whether or not like you were at the funeral for somebody who was damned or somebody who was saved. Like that just doesn't exist when you're going to like the death of somebody normal. Adam thought about stuff so much more than me. (laughs) No, no, this is what, like I was such a fucking tortured. Like everything was, was this, these stakes, everything was like, and not like life or death. Mm -hmm. It was like eternal life and death. Mm -hmm. I've just slowly realized that I, I, I memorized a lot of it and I know a lot of it still, but I never really believed as much as I thought I was supposed to, which you're, is you're prob- good. You were which, taking the test. Pro- you're probably healthier. <laughs> yeah. probably kept Adam up at night and I was just like, eh, huh? Okay. Um, so it's divided into three parts. The first part is kind of the, like the shepherd metaphor. Mm-hmm. You know, he leads me, uh, rod and staff, green pastures, still water, um, restores my soul. Well, yeah. So you got the shepherd metaphor for God, uh, but also like there's a lot of Kings who like call them, you know, the shepherd of my people. Mm-hmm. Apparently that was a popular thing with the, um, Hammurabi, you know, the, am I saying that right? That, I know the name, but I, I don't know. I actually, it's one of the, make sure I'm saying to... that right. Cause I did not want to say that. No, I've heard the word before. I just don't know what it means. There's also elements where, and I think we've talked about this too, but like Jesus is often portrayed as a shepherd of people. Yeah. And that, also, it could be a callback to David. So there's a, there's all these like Ooh. in jokes upon in jokes or not <laughs> jokes, but like in references to upon in references where it's like because David was a shepherd first, then like he was the like he went from a shepherd of sheep to a shepherd of his uh, country. And then like Jesus, well, like I'm the shepherd of like all the people because David was a great man and you guys like David. So I'm like David. <laughs> and also I'm his like great, 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 great grandson. <laughs> like there's it's but it was it's I mean. But the shepherd thing is a, is a thing. So right, Ham- but I think it's yeah, I think because of this. Hammurabi was a uh, Babylonian king in the like 
1700 BC. Mm -hmm. And you probably have heard of it because the Hammurabi Code is this giant stone that lists like a scaling system of crime and punishment. No, no, I don't know it. I mean, it sounds cool. Okay. Anyway, but he, he referred to himself as a shepherd where like the, you know, like the rich, important people were just as important as like the, you know, the poor widow. Sure. Um, I mean, it's just like how everybody calls themselves uh, like a digital influencer now, like references. Well, it's it's like, it's a common, it's a common job. (laughs) Yes. I do not. Well, there you go. You should uh, feel lucky to have me on your program. I, I count my <laughs> blessings every week, Nicholas. Um, anyway, so the, the first section is the, the shepherdy part. The middle section is the, like the stakes, like you walk me through the valley of the shadow of death and mm-hmm. because of you, I will fear no evil. Okay. Um, and then the third part is just kind of like a, a caring bit. Like you prepare a table for me, you know, my head with oil, oh, my cup runneth that. over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So it's like, you know, you're my caretaker. This is what you're caring for me against. And then here's like what you're doing for me. That's mm-hmm. kind of the, like the format. Yeah. It's, it's not complicated. Um, but Adam, as I was reading into this, I, I found an interpretation that I thought you would kind of like, okay. Um, because the, just like the, the David, like, you know, daydreaming and, you know, doodling with his bick and like his, uh, lined journal, yeah. his, his moleskin with the Weezer um, wings and, and oh, moleskin is a little fancy. He's a king. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, not fancy enough. It's kind of, you know, still, it's kind of still drawing the, the Susi S and the anarchy symbol, of course, <laughs> all over the place. Um, but then he'll like cross out the anarchy symbol. <laughs> He's like, He's like, I'm, oh, king, right, I'm a king. I'm a king. <laughs> he'll, he'll put the Stussy crown on it. Yeah. Oh. yeah. If he does that Stussy S he's doing the crown, the jester crown as on well. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Obviously. Um, <laughs> so an uh, interesting interpretation was this is a, like a battle metaphor where it's like the God is, you know, like caring for me in battle. Huh? And because apparently a thing to do was the prepare a table uh, in the presence of my enemies is like, they'd have a big like blowout before a battle oh, okay. and make it loud. So the other, the other team was like, Oh know, shit. Sh- they're bricks. Yeah. yeah oh, no, like- they're so confident. We're just back to these football locker room, uh, <laughs> things again. Sure. Uh, such a weird thing. And then like you annoy my head with oil, which right. they do before battles. Um, they use oil as salad dressing at the meal. Yep. Mm-hmm. They make them real slippery so you can't catch them. Right. Uh, it's, it's the battles are actually like flag football. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, very erotic and, and pig wrestling or pig ca- uh, catching. What's that? Is that like, you know, where they grease the pig and they, you're from Illinois, you know, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Illinois and Wisconsin. Yeah, they got a, I mean, they, the land o pigs. You know where they grease pigs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, call Chicago the piggy city. That's what they call it. But I thought you'd like the kind of the battle metaphor. You know where they like, they they dye the river green and let the pigs loose. I don't know why this is so funny to me. But yeah, uh, now, neither Nick or I are laughing. <laughs> no, so. that's fine. Uh, it's that's an interesting take on it because it's it's usually presented in such a like. The opposite, where not not battle, very personal. The whole thing is about like protection and being calm and taken care of, and this is about being taken care of. But so you can like, you know, kill a dude. I mean, yeah. that's, that's on brand for David. It totally is. Both the, like because the, those the other harping guys and the sorting, and yeah. those other guys don't have God on their side. So Absolutely, they're for sure toast. Well, yep. not this one. They might come with another collection. Yeah, but their God <laughs> sucks. Right. Yeah, but he's also real, apparently. Ed seems to have like pretty good lasting power. That was glossed over as kids. As kids, we were like every other God presented in the Bible was fake. They were delusional, but the people in the Bible seem to take other gods pretty seriously, yeah. which I know we've talked about before. Yeah. So. I, it's also been interesting too. Like the Israelites didn't have a great track record militarily. There's only a couple instances where they actually won. Most of the time they were getting their asses handed to them. There just seemed like there was enough of them. Yeah. There's a lot. I, it also, it's, it is very strange to me. Like all of these wars don't feel like they don't, none of them are final in any way. They all seem like, you know, like they have a fight, they kill a bunch of people. And then instead of like pushing on and take like sacking the capital, they're just like, Oh, fuck it. We're just go back to doing whatever you're doing. Right. I, I really like this war, um, interpretation because Nick, I feel like you can just picture this in your mind. Psalms 23 in particular, you know, along with like what John three sixteen or something, yeah. but it would be something that your grandma would have framed. Yes. Um, in like papyrus <laughs> over a sunset. Perfect. Yeah. And sometimes yes. not even the verse, like might just be Psalms 23, the words. Oh, sure. 
Sure. No, she has that tattooed on her back. Correct. In, in, in Gothic. <laughs> yeah. And grandmas are very different in Illinois. Yes. <laughs> well, it's all the pig catching. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it, Alan's right. Like it would be like a, like a, a poster with, you know, um, I just Googled yeah. Psalms 23 oh, oh, wow. Google images. Yeah. Perfect. And there are so many sunsets. You also, what also gets really interesting is sometimes they'll start mixing like memes, Christian memes. So there'll be like the, the text of Psalms 23 over like with one thing cro- or one, with a cross. Yeah. There'll be a cross. That's, that's, that is 100%. But I was thinking there also have been ones where like, it's just one set of footprints. <laughs> I was like, no, but that tracks the Psalms 23 sort of. Yes. But it's like, it's, we, I'm taking this piece of it's, it's a little bit like no, writing wrote, like the Spider-Man thing and putting it over X-Men. Like, no, we, we rode piggyback through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. <laughs> yes. And there were one set of footprints, <laughs> but it's just like, it, it is very like crossing the streams sort of referencing that happened quite a bit. Sure. Crossing streams. Yeah. Yeah. Got that's, it. That's another David story though. Um, yeah. Well, more crossing swords and crossing streams. So I wanted to look up, uh, you want to do a quick break and then we'll talk about musicians. Yeah. I think there's a couple that are going to surprise you. Yeah. We'll be right back here on the King James Virgin. <laughs> and we're back here on the King James Virgin. We're back deal with that, Adam. I will definitely deal with that. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, I fixed a very weird audio edit just there and you will never know. Okay. Um, <laughs> So Nick, as Adam and I were talking about this episode, I kind of jokingly said like, well, not okay. The first part's not a joke. I was like, I bet there's a lot of music inspired by this, Mm -hmm. just not really even thinking about it. And then jokingly, I said, man, I hope there's a rap song. There's a lot. (laughs) There's a lot. And what's interesting is the, the not rap incorporates these lyrics inspired by Psalms 23 in kind of a, like an anti, um, uh, religion sort of Ooh, way flipping out of its head like um, Pink Floyd uh, in a song called sheep Se- <laughs> like they start with the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to he makes me down to lie through pastures green he leadeth me by the silent waters with bright knives he releaseth my soul mm. he maketh me to hang on hooks in high places he converteth me to lamb cutlets I was like I did not see Fuck. that coming it's great <laughs> Does, uh, I was like, does anybody really know any of the lyrics of Led Zeppelin songs? No. <laughs> Wait, Pink Floyd. Whatever. Same thing. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that I, before we get, it's like, I, I am very much well aware that Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin are not the same band. I'm in but favor. Come on, of, guys. I'm in favor of your conflating them. <laughs> it's uh, all boring record store day shit. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> there's a U2 song where again, it starts. Yay. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow. Yay. I will fear no evil. I have cursed thy rod and staff. They no longer comfort me. Mm. Anyway. Ooh, we didn't play that one in church. No, we, uh, <laughs> Nick, we, you could get away with playing some U2 in church. Oh, I yeah. think we've talked about this a little bit. Like you'd mix in like little bits of U2 into worship songs to spice them up. Is this, uh, would have, okay. Have the two of you in a band together played a U2 song? Yeah. At 100%. Oh, which one of you was the edge? In that case, I was. <laughs> Woo! But also Bono. No, you were Bono in that case. You had the glasses as a joke. <laughs> oh, we did do the glasses as a joke once. Uh, <laughs> but so we we're a little self-aware. Yeah, that, sure. that the time we like just straight up covered beautiful day. Probably. Uh, that was that one. We were very self-aware. But I think I mixed in uh, with or without you chunks into songs. Like oh, as I like almost as a like a like a bridge. Just sure. Pull it in. Yeah. Uh, so we got like Duke Ellington, uh, Pink Floyd, Duke pa- Ellington, Patty Smith, Grateful Dead, U2, obviously. And then we get into uh, Michael W. Smith. Well, that's I feel like the Christian band's like, who the fuck cares? Yeah, yeah of course. But then Michael W. Smith started as Amy Grant's uh, keyboard player and then became a Christian oh. artist all by himself. Uh, Michael W. Smith, uh, contender for one of the like most commonly donated used records. Really? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, and then we get into the hip hop where they take these lyrics very seriously. There's, I mean, like in, in especially like early hip hop, there's still quite a bit. I mean, like Reverend was a actual Reverend. Like, I feel like the, the hip hop community actually still has a, like some ties to Christianity. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get into the, uh, Coolio, which mm-hmm. is the one Nick knew, uh, dangerous Minds soundtrack was my very first uh, CD. Really? Yes. That was, soundtrack was huge. Oh, it was Michelle massive. Pfeiffer? 
Michelle Pfeiffer okay. was in the movie, not on the soundtrack. She did not sing. <laughs> Wait, anything. am I thinking Dangerous Minds is a huge soundtrack or is it The Bodyguard that was a huge soundtrack? Well, both. <laughs> absolutely both. Dangerous Minds was a Billboard bestseller in 1995. Uh, not the bestseller of 1995. On the charts, uh, Dangerous Minds was surrounded by the overall number one bestseller. Titanic. Of 1990. Incorrect. Ah, 1995. Mm-hmm. Another uh, movie? Nope. Uh are we too early for Backstreet Boys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm blanking. Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks is on the charts for 1995 okay, give me with, a a, with the greatest hits. Give me oh, a, what yeah. genre? Uh, the genre is Hootie and the Blowfish Cracked Rear View, <laughs> baby. <laughs> that is a genre. <laughs> and Darius Rucker's back. Uh-huh. Dangerous Minds charted for four weeks in September in between uh, two weeks of cracked rear view. That is an insane that hooting the blowfish was that big to disappear that much. Well, uh, a much cooler soundtrack was my first CD. Um, <laughs> not that I purchased, it was given to me along with my first CD player. I do not know why, but it was the Titanic soundtrack. <laughs> I Makes they sense. must just had them. I remember like a few floating around <laughs> my first kiss. My aunt was a real big Celine Dion is She's, she's I know that was us. a multi VHS. She might, not, she might not like Celine Dion. That anymore. was a multi VHS tape set. Was it? Was the soundtrack more than one disc too? Mm, no. Okay. My just first cassette that I bought myself. You know, speaking of Amish Paradise, was a Weird Al like greatest hits <laughs> up until that point, which like he's released half his catalog since then. Mm-hmm. But uh, and then my first CD was uh, Still Cruising by the Beach Boys. Oh, nice. The one with Kokomo on it. For <laughs> those of you who <laughs> the Kokomo one, the Kokomo one. Uh, such a anyway we don't need to be that podcast it also had like two uh, like in retrospect i didn't realize but they were like they recovered or like they covered their own I, what do you call it when like you re-record i guess mm-hmm. they re-recorded uh, at least california girls and another one off, off of that track uh, like i didn't realize oh, at the not? time pull it in like what a weird fucking album we're what? at eight tracks you guys yeah <laughs> why did we all like barbara ann it's not a good song. It's but not, like as a kid, that was like the one that I knew. I think it's the recording quality because it has a very like live. Like was that one of the ones that was on Full House? Maybe I don't know. <sighs> Probably it was just like the one that I knew as a kid. Totally before I knew the other ones. I, I think it, it has character because of its live quality. Like it's a single take, all in the room. Hmm. Anyway, it's not a good song. It's fine. It's fun. We also got. Uh, let's see, uh, stained. <laughs> Wait, the band Stained? Yeah. Shit. I forgot that Stained. Is there anything more bland than Stained? Is Stained the band or is Stained the man? Stained is a man? I don't care. I always thought it was just like in the videos, it was just that. That guy? That guy. Mr. Stained? Is that the bald guy? Yes. The bald fella? Mm-hmm. But doesn't he wear like like all gray and all like polos and like chinos, but like gray? So you're saying what about him? Just he's a bland, like everything about it is bland. No, we're talking Her? band or man, not bland or man. Bland man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stained. Huh. Egg? Egg. Okay. Uh, we also got Marilyn Manson, um, eh. Megadeth, Kanye. I mean, yeah, no shock there. The Offspring in 2008. Hmm. What? Yeah. Nos and Damian Marley. Is Damian Marley another Bob Marley? Uh, offspring. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's another Bob Marley. <laughs> no, no, offspring, like Ziggy Marley. Is <laughs> another one of them Bobs. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we got, uh, and then we, about a bunch of other stuff that no one cares about, like Kathy, Kathy Tricoli. Well, the one that, so the one that Evie candle. mentioned was Tupac. No. And Tupac. Yeah. Tupac is on there. Yep. Because Evie's cooler than me. Run to the dark. Yeah, but you, nope, nope. <laughs> but, but you nailed the seek out the whole. It's so. I mean, it, yeah, that one is so obvious. Well, thanks for joining us on the last. Or uh, thanks for joining us on. <laughs> fuck is our podcast? Thanks for joining us on the King James. <laughs> Did version. you just try to call us the last podcast on the left? <laughs> I know. That's, that's what <laughs> I just listened to like five in a row. Okay. <laughs> there are two Disney soundtracks in 1995's charts. Al- Aladdin. Wrong. Oh no! Ninety. No ninety-five. Uh, Lion King. Correct. Pocahontas. Correct. Okay. Look at that. You get the Disney trivia going in this. Whoo. I we mean, clean we're, up. We were like, this is when we were li- watching that. That's when like Disney movies were the thing that we were stoked for. Right. We were watching the Lion King and listening to the Dangerous Minds soundtrack. Yep. 
And not watching Pocahontas. No. Uh, nor the Dangerous Minds movie. No, that, that's Because true. that was not allowed. You could listen to the music. Absolutely not watch the movie. Does anybody else remember there's a movie called 187 around the same time? And I was, always got Dangerous Mind and 187 confused. Mm. Just this is another like this is another weird Adam remembers his old video rental facility they spent a long time in. 187. I don't know anything about this movie. I mean, it's about murder. OK, it's 187's the call Dangerous center. Minds about education. Right. But <laughs> like it's a isn't it like conservatives view of like inner city education? I guess I like my impression. All, all I honestly remember is uh, Michelle Pfeiffer with her like arms crossed on the on the poster. Yeah, she <laughs> yeah, she comes in and like changes these kids lives. Right. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, white goddess. Totally. Syndrome. Yes. Uh, two box first movie was uh, nothing but trouble. Was he actually in movies? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. He's not Those beautiful, beautiful eyelashes. It's not bad. Really? I mean, he's bad. In nothing but trouble. Fair. It's one of those movies I saw way too many times on like TBS. Got it. Or something. This is the TV hole for Adam. Missed all that. Oh. Are there other things to know about this song? Not really. Uh, only that I had to memorize it many, many times and Adam apparently avoided that. Yeah. Uh, will we uh, ever be in Psalms again or are we bidding Psalms adieu? There's a handful of other ones, but I don't think so. Probably not. I mean... Unless we'll like, see how long our podcast goes. <laughs> is it Psalm 44. The I waited patiently for the Lord who replied and heard my cry. I don't know. Or is that in the 60s? Reclined and heard my cry. You mentioned 100. 100 is the only other one that I had to memorize, but I I could not say it now. That one's the only the only one I know is that's that was one of the ones that was sh- like shoved down during 100. No, uh, the one I just did. Oh, I think it's 44 because the, the, I feel like the song was called 44 and it was like they'd taken the hmm. lyrics. There's so many. Who cares? Mm hmm. All right. Well, I guess that'll do it. Yeah. Let's wrap this shit up. Hey, thank you so much for listening. You can follow us at KJVPod on both Twitter and Instagram. We have different announcements about when upcoming episodes are being released. Uh, Nick is doing fun chitty chat things on chitty chat things yeah. on Twitter. It's, that's a thing, right? Twitter. Chitty chatty bang bang. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this week, we'd love to hear from those of you who grew up memorizing Bible verses. Uh, record... <laughs> Now's your time to shine. Now is your time to shine. <laughs> uh, record a voice memo, email it to dearjesus at kingjamesvirgin.com and tell us uh, what you remember about bi- memory verses uh, or Bible verses that you memorized. We always call them memory verses. Oh. I don't know if that's a thing. If, that sounds like a, a comic thing. Like we've entered the memory verse. No, for sure. Uh, and in our, it, it, it kind of was uh, just much, <laughs> yeah, sure. much less interesting. It's Usually, boring. Yeah. And what you do is you'd come in, you'd like stand up, do your memory verse and then there'd be on your there'd be like be a chart with your name and then like the uh, uh on the vertical axis would be the dates and you get a like a gold star would be put on your date oh the, when shit you can memorize it. yeah it's very like in retrospect like pretty shamey for the kids who you know didn't grow up in in uh, religion shocking i know right but anyway uh We'd love to hear about your experiences with memory verses and uh bonus points if you can actually recite them still because there's a no few cheating of them. Oh, I don't care. I don't I don't give a fucking shit. I am not your Jesus. You can do whatever you want. Uh, thanks to Mascaras and Resurrection Records for these for theme song Kixari off the album El Moran. And this week's Resurrection Records artist is Hagface. Uh, you can find links to these songs, uh, to stickers, other stuff on our website, kingjamesvirgin.com. That'll do it for us this week. Until next week, you better watch how you're talking and where you're walking or you and your homies might be lined in chalk.